So in this section, we will finally learn, I know you've been waiting for it, strings in Java. First, we'll learn string class in detail, and then we'll learn how to create a string object. Then we'll go over a bunch of useful methods for the string class. And then we're going to cover why string is immutable. And then we're going to introduce string buffer as a class. And we'll, we'll learn how to create a string buffer object. And then we will introduce the string builder class. And we're going to learn how to create a string builder object. So here's what you've been waiting for. Let's get to it. What is string? So a Java string is a series of characters, like the word hello or the phrase Java is funny. Okay, a string is created between double quotes. So in our example, it shows a string object in memory. It consists of individual characters, hello. The chars in a string are identified by index numbers. So in hello, the leftmost character, H, is at index 0. The next character, E, is at index 1, and so on and so forth. Good. So we will do a whole lot of examples related to the string index by using some string methods. Creating string objects. Now, there are two ways to create a string object. First one is string literal. The string literal is probably the easiest and certainly the most recommended way to create strings in Java. Um, so in this way, uh, we simply assign the characters in double quotes to a variable of the string class. And then each time when you create a, a string literal, the Java virtual machine first checks the string pool in the heap memory. If you've been paying attention, you know exactly what I'm saying. But if the string already exists in the pool, a reference to the pooled instance is returned. So if the string doesn't exist in the pool, a new string instance is created and then placed in the pool. So string literal provides memory efficiency. Because if the object already exists in the string pool, then no new objects have to be created. So now let's try to understand how objects are created by using string literals and string object by looking at our examples in this here slide. So the first line, string str1 equals hello. And here, the string object is created only in the string pool, as you see in the diagram. And str1 is the object that refers to it. On the second line, string str2 equals hello. And here, a new string object in the string pool will not be created because the string pool already contains the same object with the string hello. So the str1 object refers the same string method in the string pool. Now, on the third line, string str3 equals example. So here, a new string object with the string example is created in the string pool because the string pool doesn't already contain the object with the string example. Cool. Now, another way to create a string object is the string object. We create a string object by using the new keyword. So it creates two objects and one reference variable. So this variable refers to the object in the heap. And as you can see in this diagram in the last line, a new string object with the string Java is created in heap. Also, the same string object is created in the string pool. 
because, of course, the string pool doesn't contain the object with the string Java. However, str4 refers to only the string object in heap, not the string pool. Follow? Well, let's do up some examples with strings. First off, let's create a new Java project and specify the project name as string. Now, don't change any of the other options and just click on the next button. And in this section, just uncheck create module info.java file and then click on the finish button. So in this project, just right click on the source folder and select new class and specify the package name as string and the class name as string example. And then select the checkbox to add it main method. And now let's create two string objects by using the Java string literal. The first one will declare variable s and assign it a value of Java programming. The second one will declare variable s1 and assign it a value of Java programming again. Now let's create two string objects by using the new keyword. Now we create string objects SOBJ and SOBJ1 by using the new keyword with the string Java programming. So now we print these objects by using the print methods. In the first print method, we will print object S. In the second print method, we will print object S1. In the third print method, we will print the object SOBJ. And in the third print method, we will print object SOBJ1. Okay, so let's run the code. So here, you see the same result, Java programming is the value in the console. But I know you want to take a deeper look. So let's compare these string objects by using the equality operator, as well as the equals method. Now, while the equality operator matches the references of objects, the equals method matches values or the contents of objects. So both the equality operator and the equals method return Boolean values that are true or false. The equals method returns true if two string objects contain the same content or values. The equality operator returns true if two references refer to the same object. So in the first print method, we will print the result of s equals to s1 by using the equality operator. And then we will print the result of the expression s equals to sobj by using the equality operator. Then we'll print that result of the expression s equals s1 by using the equals method. And then we will print the result of the expression s equals sobj by using the equals method. And then we will print the result of the expression SOBJ equals SOBJ1 by using the equality operator.
let's do another one. Uh, then we'll print the result of the expression SOBJ equals SOBJ1 by using the equals operator. So let's see. Yes. Okay, good. So let's run the code. And you see the results right here in the console. S equals S1 is true because both S and S1 refer to the same object. S equals SOBJ is false because S and SOBJ refer to different objects. S equals S1 is true because S and S1 have the same contents. S equals SOBJ is also true because S and SOBJ have the same contents. SOBJ equals SOBJ1 is false because SOBJ and SOBJ1 refer to different objects. SOBJ equals SOBJ1 is true because SOBJ and SOBJ1 have the same contents.